This chunky felt needle case is at least 10 years old, if not more. And it needs a refresh. I'm Stephanie. I go by Stamp JG here on YouTube and at my blog at stampjg.com. And I want to bring you along for the process to recreate an updated version of this chunky felt needle case. I think it would be a wonderful personalized gift for a friend or a loved one. And all it takes is a little bit of felt, a little bit of embroidery floss, and a little bit of time, and something wonderful can be made. So grab some felt and let's get started. And since I went a little crazy at BenzyDesigns.com back some time ago, I thought I would use wool blend felt. You don't have to use wool blend felt. This is what I have, um, but I wanted to start to dig into this <laughs> little obsession I have with wool blend felt. It's um, beautiful. It die cuts absolutely beautifully. If you are a paper crafter and you like to die cut some shapes, wool blend felt die cuts absolutely beautifully. And I have some scraps. I save most of my scraps, so all of these will come in handy. And I'll show you, these were die cut pieces with a rectangle shape and there's no frayed edges or anything. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, this is another die cut shape. I decided to go with a beautiful blue and aqua theme. So my outside is gonna be this light blue, my inside is gonna be this, and I'm still trying to decide what color I'm going to make the pages on the inside. Now felt sheets come, generally speaking, in 9 by 12 pieces. So it makes it very easy. My, my outside dimensions are 6 by 9. So if you cut the felt sheet in half, then you have plenty of pieces to make your cover. Now you don't have to use a template. I've got some chipboard here. It's kind of medium weight chipboard. And I wanted to cut a couple of templates to make it even easier for myself. And I'm not going to use my rotary cutter. <laughs> Don't use your rotary cutter on paper. I am going to use a utility knife and simply I have determined that I want my inside pages to be five by nine. I mean, sorry, five by seven and a half. Now, I will need to cut some of it down a little bit later, but this would be the largest I would want to be. I'm gonna use a rotary cutter, so I don't necessarily need cardboard. I need a metal edge ruler. So I'm going to line this up. I think I'm supposed to push away from me. You can tell I'm not really a sewist. I don't really sew too well. Oh, that cuts nicely. Fresh blades make all the difference in the world on your rotary cutters. So I could choose to put these back to back and they're not gonna match up exactly and we need to, we'll go over that in just a minute because when you fold these, um, felt is a little, a little bit um, loose in some respects so you're never going to have exactly right edges when you buy your sheets from the store or from Benzie Designs and a lot of times when you fold it in the middle anyhow your middle piece is going to try to stick out so the other thing that I can do at this point is go ahead and line this up the way I want I want to make sure it wants to be and come along the edges. And keep slicing. until I have a clean edge. And you don't have to use a lot of pressure, a little bit of pressure, but not much. So now if you're cutting it with scissors, that's a whole different story. So anyhow, I have my 
outside ready to go my cover now I'm going to make some inside pages okay I'm going to start with a half a sheet of felt make sure it's lined up here So I have my outside cover, which is this teal, and then my inside pages are going to be this light blue, kind of a light aqua color. Now to let you know, your inside page needs to be a little bit smaller width-wise than your outside. So when they're lined up in the middle, the inside page has room to push outwards and become flat here otherwise it'll stick out beyond there so that's why when you cut your inside pages you want to set it in the middle as much as you can and it's gonna be about what a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch shorter on each side in order for it to sit right when you fold it in half because it's so thick and that is the case with these pages as well so when I close these I'm going to line them up because they're both the same size right now. And I do them sideways. One of these has decided to be longer than the other. So I am Lining that up. And just cutting off the edges. And you don't have to be that precise if you don't want to. That's fine. So the inside of my book and the outside of my book are complete. So here's the part where we want to figure out what we want on the inside. And I'll just explain a little bit of my thought process here. Let me zoom you in. Originally when I had this needle case, I was doing a bunch of different crafts, needle crafts. Um, so I've got Chanel needles, beading needles, tapestry needles, which are for counted cross stitch, um, embroidery needles, and just this random needle in the back. There's no sewing needles, there's no pins, and they needed some. The other thing that happened here is I used some satin or rayon thread by DMC, and this was to, to, supposed to tie through my needle threader to keep it in place. Only you can see that this is really not a good thread for that because it's just it's it's got a lot of tension or something in or twist or something in it and it just will never make a pretty bow it just doesn't and it's always a tangled mess the other thing is I've started using dental threaders for hard to hard to thread things chunky fibers or whatever and I need a home for that without poking myself this pocket is great. It needs to be just a little bit taller. This is a needle puller. If you've got something hard to pull your stuff through, but it would be good for my, a needle threader to sit in there instead. And the other thing in the back is I didn't make a place for my pocket, a uh, pocket or anything for my scissors. So they, they fall out, but it's always nice to have a pair of scissors. And the other thing I wanted to do is make a place somewhere in here for some, some just regular pins because I always need these and I can never find them. And what I find myself doing is this, which works pretty good actually. <laughs> it makes a great cover to start. Um, you know, it's very versatile if you need to th throw pins in the cover while you're working. So, and then we'll get into decorating. Um, just to let you know, we'll decorate the cover 
I think I'm going to do a, a separate video on the decoration on the cover. This is needle embroidery. I'm ribbon embroidery and I will do how I did this, but you certainly can do anything you want on your cover, including if you have some letters, you can die cut them from felt and put them on, on the cover and decorate around it. I mean, all kinds of things are, are available, especially if you have die cuts or you can cut them by hand. The other thing that's not working for me real well is the Velcro hook and loop buttons. They work actually pretty good. It's just over time they've kind of frayed and they catch on some of the um, they catch on some of the felt. So I think I'm going to change this out to an elect um, an electric snap. <laughs> Don't I wish a uh, magnetic snap? So those are some of the th things that I wanted to do on this one. Some of the things that you can use, especially if you're a paper crafter, with your felt is die, die cuts, um, wafer thin dies. I have these older ones by Spellbinders. Honey Bee Stamps and makes a um, 5x7 set, an A7 set of dies that would make great pages, or like this little one in the middle I've used for... Um, a pin. Um, there's rounded dies and Honeybee also makes this Be Bold Alphabet which would make a great monogram for the cover or some of the pages. So these are some of the dies that I can use or will use with these. If you don't have a die cut machine or a or dies and you're not a paper crafter or you can always trace shapes and cut them out. Um, print them off the internet somehow and trace them onto paper or cardboard and then cut them out of your felt. It's You can make it very simply that way. Two of, the two of them I wanted. What I'm using, this is a uh, spell binders that's similar to a Platinum 6. It's the Jean Davenport model. And I've got the base plate. I've got a scrapbook.com magic mat which is kind of like a cutting mat. It's wonderful. Uh, put down my felt. Let's see, this one is getting this shape. I think, nope, that's not it for this one. Oops, yep, yeah, okay. Okay, I'm trying an experiment here. I don't know if the paper will cut down on the fraying. I think I have used that at different points, but let's try this again. Now the tape will pull your felt, which is why I kept it on the outside. And that got a much, much cleaner finish. There's still a couple of little fuzzies here. See how this one did. Very few fuzzies. So the paper didn't necessarily make any difference. I thought I might try that. But I think part of it is keeping the dies in place with a, just a bit of tape on the outside of the die. So a couple of die cut shapes and I'm going to move my die cut machine off to the side. I have laid out the shapes that I cut for my pockets 
and pieces inside my interior of my needle case. And I've decided to go ahead and use a little snow on snap instead of an elect electronic, listen to me, a magnetic, a magnetic closure. The magnetic closure I bought seemed to be hard to pull apart, so I didn't want to be struggling with it. And it and again, I didn't want to go ahead and use a hook and loop because it seems to be fraying some of the felt that it comes in contact with. So I have sna a snap, and then I'm setting a pocket. This one in the back is going to be for my scissors. This one up and the top is not a pocket. It's going to be a place to put some pins. And then this front area is going to be a pocket. Either that or I was thinking maybe I would do something cute like that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens when I go to sew it down. What I wanted to do first is get these snaps situated. Snap here and one here. And I'm going to sew this one on first. Just make sure that's far enough in. I think I'll just come up from the inside and start. Come on. Okay. Okay, I have finished attaching all of my little pockets and things to my inside cover. I attached it with embroidery floss, just simple running stitch or straight stitch around the back. What I've done here on the scissor pocket is I have attached a snap here and covered it with a flower that I embroidered with yellow floss and put a little bead. And so now I've had these scissors, but I also just got these from scrapbook.com. And they're a little four inch stainless steel scissors. They're exact same, exact same size. They're really cute. Plus these have a little um, sheath on them. So it's nice and easy. I could just pop that in here. Whoops. And now, whoops, let me get these off. Now my scissors won't come out. Before I attach this to my front cover and also attach pages, because again, I still have to have my, still have to attach my pages here in the middle. I wanted to do the front cover, and that's done, except for the little medallion on the front. So here's the one I'm working off of. This is my old one, and you can see the silk ribbon embroidery and the beads and knots I put on it. And I'm going to do something very similar with this one. This is a sample of what I'm going to put on the front. You can see it's got silk ribbon and some beads. Well, it will have beads. It doesn't yet. And, of course, it's messy on the back. But that's going to go on my front cover. I am going to put a separate tutorial on how I did this. The silk ribbon stitches, the silk ribbon embroidery, and I'm going to have that as a second video, a part two, that will show exactly how I did this in depth. That way, um, this video doesn't get too long. But when I put my beads and stuff on here, I'm going to attach this to the cover. I will 
attach my pages into the center and then the last step that will happen is I will um, stitch around the edge to seal up my front and back covers. So let's go ahead and get this onto the cover. Okay, I have attached the embellishment to the cover with a running stitch. And now I'm in the process of lining up my inside pages and my outside pages so I can stitch a line down the center through all four layers of felt to attach the pages securely. Um, felt is fiddly. It, it's got some give to it, so it doesn't line up perfectly. So if you're a perfectionist like me, you have to take a deep breath. And what I've come up with is to measure the middle of the inside pages and make a little mark and measure the middle of the cover pages and make a mark and then line them up as close as I can and play with the pages a little bit okay I have set this up so that my inner pages and my outer pages are centered with each other I have put a piece of very, very low tack tape. This is by Thermoweb and it's called Pixie Tape. Um, and this does not stick to the felt at all. I have stuck this in the middle and I have marked the tape every quarter inch with a permanent pen. And that's just to give me guidelines to stitch because I wanted these stitches to at least have a chance of being straight and even. We'll see what happens. This is handmade. So, and I know you can't see it from out here, but the other thing I wanted to show you that I'm doing before I cut away and stitch this off camera is that I am coming up to start my stitches off the pages, but I'm coming up between the two covers so that I can hide the knot between the two covers. I have not stitched the covers together yet. That will be my last step. So I'm gonna come up between the two covers to hide my knot and then I'm going to stitch just a straight stitch through all four layers of felt okay I am back after having stitched the center and the attaching the pages to the both the front and the back covers as you can tell it's still a little bit of a whimsical look <laughs> Even with all my trying to measure and using the tape, I still ended up with uh, some some little kind of imperfections, I guess. Um, the only thing I do want to say is I think if I do this again, and I don't remember what I did the last time, I think I'm just going to mark on the fabric itself with a little dot every quarter inch and go up and down through those holes rather than trying to use tape. The tape worked okay, but it kept slipping and it really got hard to measure um, and line everything up. So as you can tell, it just a little bit off, no matter how hard I tried. But again, this is a whimsical um, needle case for myself, and I'm okay with that. So the next thing to do is to stitch around the edges and complete the needle case. I have um, three strands of DMC floss in this color here and I am going to go around the edges and seal the front and back covers to each other and truthfully I'm having a hard time deciding if I should do a whip stitch a whip stitch or if I should just do the same running stitch that I've been using through everything else in this um, needle case so I don't know, this is one of those things like if I were live I could take a poll or something, but <laughs> I'm just going to have to make up my own mind and I'll let you all um, make comments in, down below if you think um, I made the right decision once I come back and show you if I um, made a whip stitch or a running stitch. I'm, I'm still trying to decide. I also want to come in, I believe, here at the back. I'm going to start in the middle between the two so that my tail is hidden 
whoops, I don't want to catch that, so that my tail is hidden between the covers. So when I start, which I'm going to start over here by the back, I can tuck my tails in and then come out and around. I don't know, are we going to do a whip stitch or are we going to do a running stitch? And I think it's going to be a running stitch. Or a straight stitch. I keep calling it a running stitch and I apologize because it is truly a straight stitch. A running stitch is similar but not the same. Hey, what about this you guys? This is called Tiger Tape, and quilters use it. And it's already pre-done, and I think it's like 9 stitches per inch. It is 12 stitches per inch, and it's, um, you know, a good size roll of tape. I've had this in my stash for a little while, um, because I like, I like to try to do even stitches. <laughs> Some, and I think a lot of it is practice, and as a paper crafter, I don't practice this too, too often. So, um, I forgot about having this, and I probably could have used this earlier. Uh, what I need to do, what I'm going to do with this is take it off and put it on my clothing to take some of the stick off. There we go. So maybe every other stitch, every other. And of course this gets a little challenging to do on camera. So I will do a couple of stitches and then I will come back once I'm completed. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. And for the big reveal, here we go. The needle book is finished. Let me zoom you in for a close up look. As you can see, my stitches are still kind of whimsical. <laughs> It just that's how it is but this is the front cover with the silk ribbon embroidery and beads and again I will have a tutorial listed in the description box below in the show notes and on the inside I have a pocket for some of the tools that I use my needle threaders a dental threader Um, my large yarn needle and here is a needle puller to give me traction on those that I need. I don't really use thimbles. I, I think if I used a thimble or something I could find a way to put it in here. Place for some pins. I have areas for needles that I currently use and I have plenty of space to add more needles. And of course, a snap pocket for my scissors. I close those up. There we go. And it's all in a nice, tidy little package. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!